Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode nine of Macaw Matt May with Craig and Sean. Ooh. As per usual, I am Craig Lance. I am Sean, bearded capulet. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, jump right into this. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us again. We're going to uh, be discussing Friday the 13th, Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. <laughs> I know last week we took a break from the Friday the 13th movies, but uh, we're right back into it this week. And oh, yeah, what man. a good one this one is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we got, there's, there's, uh, there's a lot going on with this film. Uh, more appropriately titled uh, "Jason Takes Vancouver" and uh, um, "Jason, I'm on a motherfucking boat." <laughs> I oh. was thinking it should have been uh, Jason. Yeah, or uh, Jason, why don't you just take the night off and save your reputation? That would have been a good one. <laughs> For sure. So, but, uh, but yeah, tell the good yeah, people about the film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Let, let's start with our obligatory uh, spoiler warning. We cannot uh, talk about these movies without spoiling them. So if you haven't seen this movie and you don't want to be spoiled, now is your one and only chance to pause this episode, go watch it, and then come back and finish listening to our show. Go ahead. We'll wait. We'll wait. We got and time. yeah, now that you've watched the movie, <laughs> let's get to it. <laughs> So, as we said, this one is uh, Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. This was released in 1989, and all the glory that goes with everything in 1989. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, was written... I was actually going to say, it was actually a, uh, for good or worse, depending on your how you feel on the movies, but that, that year we had a movie from Friday 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, and Halloween. So it was yeah. it was a year of slashers, but it was a year of kind of late slasher sequels. So take that as you yeah. will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, this was this one was written and directed by Rob Heaton, I think is how you say his name. We'll go with and it. it. Star yeah, it's starring uh, Jensen Daggett as Rennie, Scott Reeves as Sean, Peter Mark Richman as Asshole Uncle Charles, <laughs> and. Uh, it's returning uh, Kane Hodder as Jason. Woo! Yeah, so this sequel kind of dispenses with all the traditions of the original yeah. uh, first seven series, and it just starts right with the credit, the opening credits. Whereas all in all of the other movies leading up to this, you always got a pre-credit scene, right? Um, and this starts with. Uh, you know, kind of a very stereotypical scenes of what people perceived New York to be in the late 80s. You know, drugs, crime, graffiti, barrels full of toxic waste with oh. rats swimming in it. Oh, yeah. They, they uh, made sure they just wanted you to really know New York's a complete fucking shithole by these opening credits. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And it was, I mean... Just every bad stereotype you could think of big city life they showed in this opening credits oh, with some sure. pretty, you know, typical 80s type opening. Right. And then uh, as soon as the credits end, we jump back to Crystal Lake with a uh, apparently larger Crystal Lake than we're used <laughs> to seeing because now it's got boats on it. Um, starting with a small or a large houseboat, small yacht, I guess, uh, cruising around on Crystal Lake at night. Right. Uh, um, with a couple, a teenage couple hanging out on the boat. And as the night becomes, let's say, more adventurous for them, <laughs> right? <laughs> they decide to set anchor. And of course, they drop the anchor right on an underwater power line. And then as the boat drifts, it drags the power line onto the corpse of Jason. The resulting electrical shock restores Jason and returns. And he returns to his mission of killing every young person to ever come to Camp Crystal Lake. Right. Starting, of course, with the couple on the boat. But before that happens, the the teenage boy that I didn't care to learn his name... Um, <laughs> <laughs> recants the story of Jason uh, to the girl that he's on the state with and this is how we kind of get our flashback in this one so it was kind of a different way to tell us what was going on uh, 
And then he decides later to play upon that story and he jumps out and scares her while wearing a hockey mask that conveniently already has the axe slash in it from <laughs> part two. Yeah, like perfectly weathered, perfectly damaged, except for the, <laughs> the motorboat damage. Yeah, like yeah, the act, the act, the act's been annoyed me. Like, really? <laughs> it, it, well, obviously, in Crystal Lake, you can go to any convenience store and pick up the Jason hockey mask with the pre axe slash in it. Clearly. Clearly. <laughs> so, uh, Jason comes on board, sees the mask, picks up the mask, puts it on, and then kills the couple. Uh, the next day begins with a class of typical 80s teenagers and all of the stereotypes associated with them. Loading onto a boat to take a school trip uh, on a cruise from Crystal Lake to New York, along with their two chaperones, the essentially nameless English teacher, <laughs> and Charles, the asshole school administrator, and uncle of our heroine, Rennie. As the ship leaves, Jason climbs aboard and stows away, because that's what Jason likes to do. Um <laughs> uh, um, once the boat has pulled anchor and starts toward New York, Jason begins doing his thing and killing off the students. Um, it is worth noting that the part of Crazy Ralph is now played by Crazy Deckhand, <laughs> who keeps warning everyone they are all going to it die. It is absolutely new Crazy Ralph for 1989. <laughs> <laughs> um, eventually, Rennie and her boyfriend, Sean, make their way to the bridge, which is captained by Sean's father only to find the crew dead and the boat adrift on the river. Sean lets out a warning to everyone, and as he tries to call Mayday, Jason cuts the cord to the radio, um, and Charles becomes a bigger asshole, berating Sean for his lack of knowledge on how to man a boat all by himself at, <laughs> you know, 18 years old. Right. I mean, he's a, <laughs> he's the son of a ship captain. Surely his genetics, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, Jason continues picking off the kids. Eventually, uh, one of his kills, which is an electrocution, ignites a fire on board of the ship. So, Jason, being the good guy he is, pulls the fire, fire alarm so that everyone knows to panic. Rennie, Sean, Charles, Julius the Boxer, the nameless English teacher, and Toby the Dog make it to the lifeboat having left the rest of their friends and students to either drown, burn to death, <laughs> or be killed by Jason, because right. fuck the rest of them. Yeah, pretty much. As Julius <laughs> and Sean rode the lifeboat, Charles continues berating Sean because he doesn't know how to navigate and has no idea where they are, because, you know, that is what the person in charge and the chaperone should do. Of course. <laughs> Eventually, they, they spot the Statue of Liberty and row into the harbor where they are picked up by a harbor patrol and saved, and in credits roll. Oh, wait, no, that's not <laughs> what happens. <laughs> they get out of the life lifeboat and begin wandering around the docks. And as soon as they leave screen, we see Jason climb onto the dock. So either he walked across the bottom of the river all the way to New York. <laughs> Or he swam the whole way. Either way, he was there with them. As our heroes round a corner, they are confronted and mugged, and Rennie is taken by the muggers at gunpoint. Sean and Julia split off and go to look for Rennie. Charles and English teacher split up. Charles looking for the cops and English teacher roaming around the docks in New York by herself. <laughs> Always <smart. laughs> the, mug <laughs> the muggers in the meantime have given Rennie a dose of heroin so she won't fight them as much while they try to rape her. And just as they begin to try and rape her, her hero, Jason, shows up and <laughs> saves the day. Good guy, Jason. <laughs> she runs off into the night, high on heroin, eventually running into Sean. As Jason pursues her, he runs into J Julius and they decide to box for the heavyweight title. Jason employs the Rocky technique of boxing where <laughs> one allows his opponent to wear himself out. Once Julius is worn out, Jason takes his best shot and literally knocks Julius's head off. <laughs> in, 
In the meantime, our four survivors have all met back up along with a cop who doesn't believe their story. And when the cop is killed, our high on heroin hero gets in the driver's seat of the cop car and runs Jason over. And then having a vision of young Jason runs into him, crashing the car and killing the nameless English teacher. Rennie then has a drug-induced memory of Uncle Charles throwing her into Crystal Lake as a child to teach her how to swim, while child Jason pulls her to the bottom of the lake and she almost drowns. When she comes out of the memory, she confronts Charles and her and Sean wander off on their own. Charles is soon killed by Jason, who then chases Rennie and Sean through New York, apparently not caring about anyone else other than Rennie and Sean. Yep. yep. Even <laughs> Eventually, they end up in the sewers and the toxic waste that is accumulated in New York sewers daily and disposed of at midnight every day into the river, I'm assuming, uh, drowns Jason and turns him back into child Jason. Rennie and Sean leave child Jason in the sewers and go to the surface. Yeah, and that happened. I, <laughs> I know there is one big question left. What the hell happened to Toby the dog? Apparently, he was just waiting for them to get out of the sewers. Sean, Rennie, and Toby live a happily ever after life and hit end credits. So, Ooh. that, yeah. <laughs> and if that sounded um, at all sarcastic... That was about the best spin I could put on that movie. Yeah, I mean, don't get it wrong. There's something to you can enjoy out of every Friday the 13th, but sometimes the movies really make you fight for it. And this is, <laughs> and this is one of them. Uh, yeah. It had a troubled uh, development. Several script changes. I'll get into some details shortly. Filming location issues. Continuity issues. Kane Hodder had a blast, and and we you could tell that at least out of this. Again, Hodder is a shining star of this. But for whatever lack there was, he had some fun. He did some cool shit as Jason, of course. He got to walk down, uh, was it Broadway? Whatever, like on the main street of Manhattan, whatever, <laughs> in costume, and you know people lined up cheering for him and stuff. You know, that's a good feeling for him, and good for him. Now let's talk about this piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, this the entire plot of this movie yeah. is to get a bunch of kids in a confined space so that Jason can kill them. Yeah, no, that, no. that's it, guys. That that's the entire plot. That is it. And let me ask you a question. I'm no geologist. I'm no topographer. <laughs> uh, is it still a lake if it has uh, a connection to the um, ocean big enough for a yacht to get through? Uh, I mean, technically. Yes, I mean all all lakes are well, not all lakes, but lakes generally have a source to the ocean. Well, I was kind um, of assumed uh, at least small. You know what I mean? Not like a, a direct connection. You know what I mean? Like for a <laughs> boat to get through. Not normally, at least. I'm sure yeah. there must be some, but that always bothered me because yeah. Crystal Lake always was supposed to always feel, you know, to itself secluded. Yeah, Crystal Crystal Lake is. Um, always had a problem of changing size right throughout the movies there was the one where it was noticeably smaller than all the other movies right um and they've never given any indication that this has a large uh, uh passageway out they've never shown any ships on it before <laughs> or right. you know barges or anything of that nature it's always come across as a lake up in the mountains in a small town um, with probably a small river leading out uh, out of the lake into whatever. All right. And, and as again, it, you could argue nitpicking these kind of details in this kind of a slasher horror franchise, but you know what? This is, <laughs> I'm here to analyze. I'm here to nitpick when I can. Yeah. And, and that bothered me. Um, it, yeah. Same. Now I was going to say, I, I forgot to actually go back and look. I made this note. I'm not sure. I don't believe Jason's mask before this one had the three red lines. I believe it only ever had the triangle up top. So it kind of like, you know, we got a, a new design. I think they kind of kept uh, for later iterations. 
Oh, which is great because then they gave us the axe wound to it as well. Yeah, so, so. so we keep that going at least with a couple <laughs> extra slashes. It's something. So here's here's something else too. Uh, did you catch um, when the mom gave? Uh, I forget. I already forgot the lead character's name. Uh, her Rennie. Uh, Rennie, thank you. Uh, the the pen as a as a graduation present. She said it say uh, Stephen King used it. Right, right. So we got like a low key kind of reference to what the original part seven was going to be about. You know. Oh, okay. You know, or what it was about in their own version of him fighting Carrie. So I, th- exactly. I feel like that was a, okay. a little nod, which this was actually supposed to be a continuation, but the actress who played the lead in seven, uh, didn't, uh, wanted too much money and they were like, no, <laughs> no, we're good. We're good. Yeah. So I thought it, that it's hard to demand a lot of money when you're going to be in another Friday, the 13th movie. <laughs> right. Hey, she tried, or maybe it was like, yeah. I don't want to, but if they pay me enough. I'll be in it. I'll return. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, uh, the, they uh, should have paid her more. They should have. Maybe it would have been a little more interesting. <laughs> uh, the ship's name is Lazarus. Lazarus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which, Lazarus. You know, it brought Jason back from the dead. Irony, symbolism. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Not yeah. That. But uh, here's the big thing. Uh, like, I, as I mentioned in the opening, A, really, it should just be called Jason on a motherfucking boat because yeah. the first hour and 25 minutes or so, he is it's only on the boat. <laughs> yeah, this is the longest of the movie since you brought that up. Is it? Up okay. to this point. Yeah, right. it was the first one to break really an hour and a half. Some other ones had flirted with like an hour and 32, an hour and 34 minutes. This one was an hour and 42 minutes, I believe. Wow. So, And the other yeah. thing I had mentioned is it'd be, the more accurate title is Jason Takes Vancouver. Because it was too expensive to film in actual New York. So outside yeah. of the scene where he comes out the subway and does that look around, you can clearly see that's where he's at. The rest of it's yeah. in Vancouver, British Columbia. All the docks. They do that a lot, there. though. I know. But you know what? You're going to make promises. You're going to show us how <laughs> shitty a city is for a good five-minute intro. You better deliver. <laughs> they, they probably did that to uh, because they knew they were going to give uh, – New York a bad name, so they uh, were charged them more, you know. Right, no doubt. Uh, did you happen to catch who one of the students, uh, the actress was, the uh, Asian girl? You know, she looked familiar, but I did not uh, put it together. Uh, that is Kelly Hu, uh, Lady Deathstroke really? herself. This is her very first ah, film. Nice. Um, so she, you know, she did go on and do other things. She did. Good for her. At least Lady Deathstrike, uh, that's literally all I know her from. But I know she's done some other acting, I'm sure. <laughs> well, the guy that played Sean actually went on to be in General Hospital, and uh, there was something else. Oh, but okay. nothing that, that our fans would probably right. know well, him as. I, I've got and, one more of someone who, okay. went on, who went on to do something we are going to we are familiar with or are going to be familiar with here down the line. Uh, the very tall man in the diner that Jason chunked across and into the mirror. Yeah. He will go on to play Jason Voorhees in Freddy versus Jason. That is, uh, uh, his name is Ken Kurzinger. Wow. Well, look at that. Uh, So we had that at least. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. One of the things that, really kind of was annoying me in this movie. I mean, there's a few, but one of the things that really was kind of getting to me was they tried to make it very stylistic with like these slow motion scenes. Oh, and yeah. yeah. You know, Jason would get a weapon and it would, the camera would focus like too long on the weapon while he slowly drew it away or whatever, Uh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it, 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 it was just a little bit over dramatic for a Friday the 13th movie, if that makes sense. No, I, I see what you're saying. I could but, definitely see that. Yeah, I mean, not that it, you know, would have run the movie in and of itself, but it just, about the third time it happened, I was like, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, no, there, the there's, there's plenty of other stuff that ruined this movie, which we'll get to. <laughs> really, and honestly, I mean, I'm, I'm, we're making a lot of jokes, making a lot of things, but like, it, it's the third act for me. But before we get to all that, like, I got some other little observations and notes uh um, yeah uh the uh, i i always called him uh the poor man's cory feldman uh the teenager with the uh, glasses and the video camera oh yeah wayne i think wayne, he's one of the yeah. few that i remember remember his name like 
he he was a uh, he un, he was an unintentional anime protagonist, <laughs> and it annoys the hell out of me because he has the hot <laughs> childhood friend who just wants to rock out all the time, and uh, he's completely oh, ignoring her yeah. for the complete bitch. <laughs> yeah, which if for that's yeah. for that's for us anime fans out there where you always got the the lead hero who has a childhood friend that you know they should hook up and he never does. It's frustrating. Yeah, <laughs> but we yeah. did get a, as much as I didn't like not see, you know as we complained before how sometimes the kills are off camera. I actually liked the guitar death. It was it, it, as far as like if you're gonna go stylized, how it kind of like the blood splattered out the corner of the TV screen when he hit her with her own guitar. Yeah, I thought that was yeah. kind of cool. It's not kill yeah. the movie worthy, but I thought that was a neat little one, to be honest. Yeah, this had a lot of those uh, kind of start to show the kill and then don't type things. It had a uh, a kill done in a shadow. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, that's not to say it didn't show a lot of kills on the screen because it did, but right. Uh, you know, maybe to keep it in our rating. I don't know. Uh, I'm sure that's that's part of it. It usually is. Uh, yeah. But kind of like, I think a, a, well, some of the bigger drawbacks of this, though, is kind of like the no likable characters again. And, uh, a reoccurring issue with some of the lesser uh, Friday the 13th. And, yeah. And even though, like I said, we spent about the first hour of this film on the boat with a bunch of kids who were not likable and were irrelevant outside of the, the, yeah. the four or five that got off the damn boat. Yeah. So like I said, again, talking about Wayne and his childhood friend, which, you know, I make the joke about the anime thing, but beyond that, there's literally nothing else about it. She wants to go in, in downstairs so Jason can kill her and she can film a rock video <laughs> for nobody. <laughs> uh, we got we got the uber bitch who wants to just sleep her way with the, with the asshole teacher with some, like, supposed to be, I guess, sexy body paint shit but i don't know she's <laughs> she's such a bitch i couldn't even care if she was attractive or not <laughs> and she like, was pretty horrible yeah yeah i mean and uh not not a satisfying end for her either that, that's the issue like, sometimes in the past we've gotten some like you know okay they're a complete horrible character the entire time but at least we get a good death i don't even i can't even remember how she died i feel like it was very she basic. died with a piece of mirror he broke off the oh, mirror and that's stabbed right. her in the eye with it yeah meh whatever <laughs> like she she would have deserved uh the the fucking uh steam room rock through the stomach that that one dude caught which was yeah uh, that was a pretty good one it's still not it's not my pick of the movie which you I'll, that, I mean, that actually let's go ahead and throw that out because that one actually is my killer movie. oh really the, the, the hot yeah. the hot rock in the stomach it's a good one yeah yeah in the sauna the kids in the sauna he just got his ass kicked by julius the boxer yeah. And he's in the sauna trying to loosen up his muscles. And Jason comes in. He is wearing gloves and he is zombie Jason. Yeah, right, but he right. picks up the... When you're in a sauna, they have those rocks that you pour water on and it creates some steam. And, you know, they keep the rocks hot. Jason picks up... It's like a lava rock and just shoves it through the guy's <laughs> chest. I thought it, thought it was pretty inventive. I know there's another one that's kind of an iconic kill in this movie. Yeah, um, it's the one I gotta vote for myself. Yeah. Uh, we got we got the boxer who was just like, you know what? You're on a roof. You got an undead killer on there. You got one skill to for protection. And you know what? <laughs> this dude went at it for as pointless and futile as it was. This dude boxed himself into being till he had nothing left to give. And then he went ahead and dared Jason to give him his best shot. And motherfucker, if he didn't take it, because that head lobbed <laughs> clean off in one fell. One film, yep, and it's yep. iconic. It's my favorite. It landed in a dumpster, and the dumpster lid closed. It was <laughs> <laughs> like there, that. it's literally one of the kills that Jason has that um anybody that's seen these movies remembers, right? You know, so I was gonna pick it. I knew you were going to, so I went with the, <laughs> with the other one. Yeah. Another honorable mention, just for like satisfying kill. I always like to kind of bring up when one's like really good. Was the heroin needle through the back and chest of the rapist? <laughs> Just because that's yeah, it like, was pretty good. I mean, like, all right, you're going to rob people. You know, you got to do what you got to do. But you're going to shoot them up with a heroin to make it easy to rape them. You're a special kind of asshole. And so that yeah. was that was a satisfying kill when Jason, like, unintentionally becomes the hero. It kind of happens, you know. Un but, unintentionally about three times in this movie becomes the hero. Now, can I tell you one of the parts that actually made the humor that made me laugh? 
but it was yeah, immediately, it. but it was immediately followed by the worst scene in all of Friday the Thirteenth franchise history to me. Yeah, <laughs> I loved in the, when we actually get to, into New York. There's a group of street toughs. You could tell because they don't wear sleeves. They got bandanas and they're listening to rap music. Mohawks. Yeah. Mohawks and, and rap. These are the whitest kids you'll ever see listening to hip hop music Punk. in 1989. <laughs> but Punker, Punkers yeah. listening to hip hop. Yeah. That's and, how you know they're bad. And Jason doesn't appreciate that. So he just walks by and kicks the shit out of their boombox, which <laughs> I don't know why it makes me laugh. Like I, It's been playing to, over this audio. I think it's funny as hell. And they get up <laughs> as expected because they have all their weapons right by them as they're chilling and they're like talking shit. And then, so you're expecting a massacre, right? These are youths. They're threatening Jason. They listen to hip hop on the street, which he doesn't approve of. And what does he do? <laughs> what does he do? I'm going to show my face and scare them away because that's what Jason does. He doesn't fucking murder people. He scares away people. Like, fuck well, that. He he literally didn't care about anyone yeah. in New York unless they were interfering with him killing the kids from Crystal Lake. And these punkers literally did that. And all he did was give them a boo scare. I, oh, that, yeah. It pisses me off as a Jason fan. That, that You know, yeah. I mean, that's just like... It's like fucking Jason Voorhees is popping to someone's dream and telling them to be good or I'll be back. You know what I mean? It doesn't fit. <laughs> but, it did not fit. But I do all. love the, I do love him just randomly kicking the boombox over for some reason. <laughs> that, that always makes that always gives me a good <laughs> chuckle when I watch it. But it would have been great if he had just killed them right after that though, too. Yeah, even if they didn't want to film it all, just kinda of like show him turn around cut away come back and it's just a pile of them on the ground you know what i mean yeah. like yeah or just like yeah show him just like you know pick up a weapon and slash and then yeah. walk off and then pan back and they're all dead or something yeah. it could have been that but don't get it wrong yeah. like that out of character thing annoys me but it's the ending that brings down this whole movie the ending what <laughs> the, the toxic waste like that first, turns him back into J little Jason. Because <laughs> first of all, the the lead character has been having visions of him for reasons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which pro I think it's one of those plot things where it's like you said they took they wanted uh, uh, was it Li Laura, Laura Park Lincoln? Yeah, they yeah. wanted her character back. I think and so, since too. since they didn't have her, they just kind of left that in, and it made absolutely no sense at all. Yeah, I, but, I think yeah. they... Uh, I agree with you on that. that. That's my theory as to why they kept that going. But then we have... And then it's just, again, which I kind of forget about this because I try to block it out of my memory, but I always had the argument, which we'll get more into when we review Freddy versus Jason, about them giving him the fear of water. I kind of forget this plant of that seed, but it's still bullshit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, like, it showed him having a, a cool behind-the-scene little moment, actually, of when, you know, Jason's grabbing and he kind of looks back and you see the toxic waste coming and he starts gurgling up water, you know, which is supposed to kind of represent his, his fear, you know, the drowning thing. Uh, yeah. Be behind the scenes, uh, that was just legitimately Kane Hodder vomiting up water. Really? He, he just swallowed so he's, much? He drunk he's... a bunch and he can... He, apparently throw up on command and he did he really puked up that water for that shot wow wow he's the man even in even in the shit yeah. he's the man but then yeah he gets turned back into a little boy but again here's where it gets confusing their explanation to that was that that freed his soul and if you weren't told that how would what the fuck would yeah. you take away from that you know what i mean yeah it that, didn't work there's yeah yeah Nothing in the movie leads you to believe that. Right. Uh, and then, you know, he's still alive and he's a child <laughs> and they leave him down there. They do. Because, I mean, like, okay, if you wanted to do the whole, <laughs> you know, we're freeing his spirit is A, why does New York Toxic Waste do that? And B, <laughs> then show like him fade away or something if you wanted to be all metaphysical with it. Why why don't why don't we discuss the reason that there's like four billion gallons of toxic waste that has to be washed out of New York? I mean by day? everything they showed me throughout the beginning and this movie, I just assumed that's what happens in New York. I've never been. 
I'm, I, I assume that that's, that's uh, canonical, and that's what happens every yeah, day at midnight. No. They flush yeah. out toxic waste. I mean, that's how we got the yeah, Ninja Turtle. I'm pretty sure that doesn't. Yeah, I'm pretty sure none of that happens. <laughs> I mean, that's why, uh, that's why Jason should have stayed in Jersey. You know, I mean, it's like. They, yeah, so this. Yeah, go ahead. This is. Well, the other thing in this movie is you kind of get that first. Uh, well, no, let me jump back here because we were talking about Jason in the water and he's lost his mask at this point. You see his face again. Right. They redesigned his face one more time. Again, yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, we had a really great scene with him in the previous movie with his face shown. Right. And it was probably the best look they've had for him. And they just abandoned it and go to this new, really crappy crappily designed um not very good of mask they had on him right um yeah it was uh definitely a step down in, in that look yeah um you know which it, it you know you lose a little something anyways if you reveal his face in every movie right you know uh part of it is that you don't see his face so you kind of get that you know, shock and awe with a few times you do. Right. But um, certainly as the movies went on, they weren't scared to show his face anymore. Yeah, it kind of became a tradition. Some Sometimes it's okay, like in part seven, like I said, his mask getting crushed as an attack. But like, yeah. it looked good. Like, you know, they, it, it, right. it, it looked properly decomposed. He had the right eye missing, which now that I'm thinking about it, like, I, I and maybe they reversed the film, but like when it, his mask came off, I swear the wrong it's eye his, was there. It's his left eye that's yeah. <laughs> so it's like so, so either they reversed the footage or they're just dumb. Either one's completely possible, unfortunately, with this film. <laughs> I yeah, I just don't think they cared about Canon a whole lot. You right. know, you just in their mind you just have a dude all fucked up under the mask and as long <laughs> as that's what it is, it's Jason and people will know that. Right. But she, also doesn't fit in too though you you want to talk about continuity in, in their own film because that same Stephen King pen or pen gets stabbed into his left eye yep and yep yet, and yet there it was with the mask off and you know so the crazy thing is is through the entire movie the uh child Jason that they had been showing his face it was the left eye through the whole thing right so when she when she stabs him in the eye hole of his mask with the Stephen King pin, I'm like, she missed his eye because it's about another two <laughs> inches below the true, <laughs> true. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. another good point. So, I didn't even think about that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the other thing that happened in this movie that kind of led to some, I think, later critique of the Jason movies. Yeah. Um, this is the first movie, you know, you talk about the fear of water. Right. Um, this is kind of the first movie where Jason moves somewhat supernaturally. So, you know, he'll be in one spot and then miraculously in another two oh, seconds later. Right, right. The, the rest of the movies, I never felt like that happened. Like, you always felt like when he showed up, there was legit enough time for that to happen. Right. Which that just, for instance, oh, go ahead, yeah, sorry. go ahead. I was just gonna say that just is an example of lazy writing. You know? Yeah, yeah, because I mean it happens a couple of times, right? It happens with the uh, the gal that's uh, the rocker that's yeah. down underneath. She's running from him. He's two levels above. She runs down the stairs and turns around, and he's standing there. Right, right. Um, and he's got her guitar. Right. Um, <laughs> Then it happens uh, with the guy that's cr climbing the mast on the uh, ship. Jason's standing there looking up at him, looking up at him, looking up at him. And then the dude all of a sudden gets grabbed by Jason, and he's all the way up the mast at that point. Oh, uh, I didn't even catch that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> and then it happened with uh, Dickhead Uncle Charles when he... Uh, is running from Jason. Jason's chasing him. He goes into the building. He's upstairs. And then Jason, who we haven't seen, is up there and throws him out the window. Right. And then as soon as he opens his eyes, Jason's standing there. 
So it happened like three times in the film. Right. And I think that leads to some of that criticism later that, you know, when people kind of bitch about the Friday the 13th movies, one of the things you always hear is that he can just move around. It, and to be honest, you know, you and I have been watching these as a, you know, critically watching them for, right. you know, eight movies now. And I, that it hasn't been an issue to this point. No, no, because like you said, and, and that's the thing, I think that's what happens when you take them out of the woods where there's believability yeah. and open space for him to maneuver or like, like what they showed in other movies, how like when people are panicked running, they're zigging and zagging trying to find a way out and he just beelines, but you can't right. do that when you got ladders and buildings and floors to work through. So that's they, right. They still want to do the, the magic Jace turn around. There's Jason scare, but like, you know, you, you have, you have to have that suspension of disbelief and it's just not executed here at all. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh. and like I said, I felt this was the first time I really had that feeling. So I just wanted to point that out. Oh, for sure. But, uh, you did remind me too. Another satisfying death was the asshole teacher, uh, getting, uh, drowned, yeah. getting drowned in, in, in a barrel. <laughs> uh, this, yeah. So, like, yeah. I like that one. Cause he was a complete dick and props to him. He was supposed to be an asshole. That actor did play it very well. Yeah, that guy's been in a lot of movies. You will you will definitely recognize him and yeah. you'll look up. He's been in television shows and movies. He's he's you know, they always seem to have like that one person that's been in other things in these movies. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, yeah, little character actors popping up in horror movies. You just see it all the time and he's definitely one of them. So yeah, so I realize when you said that, it made me think about, you know, the opening credits where they're showing all the stereotypes of New York. Yeah. And, and they kind of revisited a lot of them when Jason is chasing and killing in Manhattan. Yeah, I think, um, I think it was some intentional foreshadowing. But, absolutely. Uh, like the the bucket of toxic waste that he drowns the teacher in right. earlier. Some, you know, in the opening credits, somebody gets mugged. And, they, and I think it's the same muggers that Jason kills later. Possibly, I didn't go yeah. back and check. But uh, they throw the guy's wallet into that same looking uh uh barrel right and then uh the subway scene all the graffiti on the side later you see them uh running up the stairs and it's the same subway scene right, right. so yeah it's kind of uh like you said foreshadowing which was kind of a neat way to do it yeah you know? yeah i know totally if just like i said i was uh i caught a lot of those but it was also just like that opening it's like, yep, yeah, welcome to New York. <laughs> it's a shithole. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was not paid for by tourism right. from New York City. <laughs> I've been to New York, and it's a it's a fun place to go to. It is nothing like what they showed. Did you watch the uh, suit, the uh, toxic waste get uh, blown out the sewers? I'm sure that's part of the tour. No, <laughs> no that was not part of the tour. <laughs> I hear that there's a statue that's 22 stories tall, though. <laughs> oh, have you heard that? That the statue's 22 stories tall? 22 stories, yeah. Uh, yeah, the the big romantic thing. Which, did we get a lightning cracking off when Jason died? And yeah. Hit, hit the Statue of Liberty. I was expecting to start yeah. walking like Ghostbusters 2. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there were lightning and electricity were used a lot in this movie. And yeah. I'm not sure why, but, you know, I mean, I understood it to, like, reawaken him. Yeah. Um, he's a double Frankenstein it, monster because <laughs> he's I been mean, twice essentially. Now. Yeah. You know, like you talk about, um, we always say he's a zombie, but you kind of get more of that feeling that he is like a, a golem at this point, right? a, right. you know, a, uh, zombie that, ha you know, that has to be awakened by the lightning. Yeah. The golem's a, a better description. I always use zombie just to kind of emphasize that he is undead at this point in the franchise, but, uh, yeah, yeah. a golem is definitely a better descriptor for what he is yeah yeah because you know he gets brought back by the lightning but then when the then you had the guy when he's climbing the ship mast it gets struck by lightning oh yeah and yeah and then when jason dies you know lightning all over new york city because you know he <laughs> was there there can only be one <laughs> he was and a I highlander that, <laughs> i figure somebody else got the uh, power from Jason Dyer. Maybe that's why he looks even worse in the next movie. <laughs> but that's, yeah. that's the story for another day. <laughs> yeah. We'll be back next week for that mess of a movie. Oh, boy.
<laughs> I and I will say this. I'm going to say that having not seen that movie in a long time, but I remember that uh, uh, it was a mess of a movie. Uh, same. If I know, I've never watched it for a critique, and yeah. just for my marathons, and you know, once you go through this one, yeah. I mean, like anything, like I, I hope we weren't like overly negative. We were just being very honest on this movie. It had some moments. It had some kills here and there, but like, yeah, we're not going to just like sugarcoat everything and the next movie took some bold choices that we're going to see now if I me to watch it is it was a critical eye see if I can maybe appreciate it or not <laughs> well you know it's pretty typical like you said in horror movies that uh, at, in horror franchises as you go along they generally degrade in quality right H however uh Either the last movie was one of the best ones. We both graded it a yeah. 5.0. And this one just took a hell of a nosedive from that. Yeah. And it's, I think, you know, had it been more in the middle or not right after the last one, right. you know, if it, ha if it hadn't taken, if this one wasn't immediately following what we both considered to be the best Friday the 13th. Um, it maybe wouldn't be as shockingly bad, right? Because this was you know, the, uh, I, and it's not just us. This was the worst performing uh, Friday the Thirteenth film in the history of the series, uh, which is what led to Paramount selling it to uh, New Line. Which is, I, I was gonna one, I was gonna ask you that if that's what caused the sell of it. Yeah, it was. I mean, it. They've all declined, but they had, you know, some of them made a profit still, but even the last one didn't do as well. But this one did horrible. And uh, while they retained the title of Friday the 13th, which is why from the next three films, you'll notice it's, it's not called Friday the 13th. It's, you know, Jason Goes to Hell, Jason X, and Freddy vs. Gotcha. Jason, until Paramount gotcha. make, does the remake of Friday the 13th. So they had a deal where they maintained that title kind of like with the, uh, you know, night of the living dead return of the dead. They had those, you can keep those little copyrights on certain parts of a title, I guess. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, it was probably for all the, uh, um, merchandising. Right. So, yeah, I'm sure it had to do with keeping the merchandising rights, uh, and, uh, um, expanded canon like comic books and things of that nature yeah because this probably is, which uh speaking of that though just a little side note this uh uh this is fresh off of the friday the 13th television series oh yeah which we all want to forget so it's just that that nice uh, collection of just <laughs> the series is on its last leg it's it really didn't have anything to do with Friday the 13th, so it was a weird series. I mean, it's like they just stole the name to get the Friday the 13th fans in. Pretty much. I mean, yeah. I mean, even uh, Freddy's Nightmares had that along the same line. <laughs> I don't even remember Freddy's Nightmares. It, I must have a tale, skipped it. A Tales from the Crypt style thing with Freddy Krueger. Yeah. Kind of as the oh, host. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I skipped all that. So. Yeah. You're, you're a better man for it. <laughs> <laughs> so back to this one yeah they tried to break the mold of everything that made Friday th the 13th movies what they are it's like they wanted to go in a different direction and what they did was made a mess oh yeah <laughs> you know that that is my take on this movie um, overall there's, there's some good stuff in it because there's you know any of these slasher movies you're going to find some good kills you're going to find some some moments there. This movie pretty much lacked tension all the way through it. Right. Um, other than maybe the opening boat scene with the couple on the little yacht. Um, that's the other thing too. Little... They. Uh, that's a good point though. They. They added a little too much levity. I think that killed a lot of tension. With like yeah. silly moments of like you know Jason emerging from the dock still stalking the people should have been tense. But he's got to look up at a billboard that has a, a, a hockey goalie wearing his mask. And then he looks at the camera like, want, want. Like, well, yeah. So little silly shit like that. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There there was enough in this movie to, you know, it's not going to be the first one I go out to rewatch, but I'm not going to not ever rewatch it. 
Yeah. But I remember, you know, I haven't watched this movie in probably 10 or 15 years at this point. Right. And I don't feel like I've missed anything by not watching <laughs> it in 10 or 15 years. I so, mean, it, you know. It gets rewatched when I marathon the entire franchise, which I haven't yeah. done in a while, but that's the last time I watched it was. I watched them all just for myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess it's time to go ahead and give it our rating. Where, where are you putting this one, Sean? Uh, you know what? A few kills saved it from, like, say, a half star, but there's so much negative, and I hate the ending, and I hate the the mask pull-up to scare the, the, the troubled youths. Uh, so I'm going to give it a one star. It's just, yeah. yeah. That's a one star rating for me. Yeah, I gave it a one star as well. Um it, you know, I think I texted you while I was watching it this morning with just, <laughs> oh boy, this is going to be a long uh, one to talk about, you know. And honestly, I didn't know that we'd get this much time in on it. But, yeah. you know, like I said, there's all there's always enough to talk about. There's always some some good moments. There is that kill with Julius that is considered <laughs> one of the most momentous or, uh, you know, uh, iconic of the yeah. Friday the 13th series. Um, I'd, I'd know, put it in my uh, Jason highlight reel if I were to make one again, which, uh, a little side note, don't know if I ever mentioned any of these reviews. Uh, back in the glory days of VHS, uh, I actually, because my buddy had a uh, audio dubber, where you, I only knew how to connect it to put music. I made a music video of Jason's greatest kills throughout the franchise, recorded VHS to VHS, cutting the scenes nice. together. It wasn't fun, but it was it, it was set to Andrew WK's uh, Get Ready to Die. I wish I still nice. had that tape and I could transfer it somehow, but yeah. I, nice. it, it was, the, the headshot was included. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a, it's an iconic kill, and I, I knew you were going to pull that one. That's why yeah. we, with the other one, um, not, I mean, because I thought it was a fun kill too, not because uh, oh, I, I made a note of it too. It, it, if like, if the head wasn't just the, the, the boxing one wasn't so iconic to me as well as like to the, yeah. fandom, the, uh, the steam room kill was definitely worth it. Well, uh, definitely worthy well, of being it. Yeah. Well, the, you know, the other thing is, is that Julius getting his head knocked off. He was one of the five that you actually had a, you know, some connection to you through the movie. For Not sure. really sure why, because he was pretty much a dick all the way till the end of the movie. And then all of a sudden he became a good guy. Yeah, but, pretty um... much. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, sometimes that's what you get from the characters. They're just there. You only care about them when you're supposed to, but like it makes it satisfying though with the kill. As long as you have some connection, cause he made it that far and he, and he boxed his ass off. He tried. He tried. You well, gotta give him credit. <laughs> they foreshadowed it earlier in the movie when they're all dividing up weapons to go hunt Jason on the boat. Which right. I, you know, I skipped over that. But somebody goes, "Well, what are you taking?" And he goes, "Nothing." And they're all staring at him. And he goes, "But this," and picks up a gun. <laughs> <laughs> right. But yeah, like you said, a little bit too much levity in it that broke the tension. The effects weren't quite as good as they normally are. Um, you know, it, it, it lacked in a lot of places, um, hence our rating, but right. you know, it's still worthy of, uh, of watching in the, uh, Friday the 13th, uh, uh, lexicon here, even though they take some liberties with Canon that eventually, as you said, come back to haunt us <laughs> later. So for sure. Yep. Yeah, and, uh, so we're going to do two more in this series. And then do we want to announce what we're going to do? Yeah, sure. We can go ahead and uh, get them ready in case they're getting sick of hearing about Jason. You only got two more weeks of him for now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, go for it. Uh, Actually, three more weeks, aren't we? Because we've we've got oh, yeah. two and then, and then the remake. Oh, yeah. I guess we'll do the remake and then we'll... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I keep... Lord help me, I own it, and I keep forgetting it exists. But we'll get into that <laughs> later. Uh, yeah, so three more weeks of Jason. And uh, you should, but you might be thinking, well, there's, but he's has four more movies. Well, we decided before we get into the greatest slobber knocker of them all, the the, the battle of the ages have been going, <laughs> have been rumored since, uh, you know, my childhood, Freddy versus Jason. We are going to give Freddy his due. So we will be doing the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise up and that way. Well, 
Go ahead. Yeah, that way when we get to the big battle, you have the background on both of them and and the reason a uh, serial killer was made from, you know, the uh, raping of a nun by a hundred different uh, <laughs> a son of a uh, hundred serial maniacs. killers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which uh, we'll also find out. As we've as we've learned from this series, the uh, peaks and valleys of a long running franchise. I don't feel like there's not going to be that many peaks for Nightmare, but we'll find out, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> we will. We will. All right, but that's yeah. going to do it for today. We want to thank all y'all for tuning in. I hope you've been enjoying this series. We've had a blast talking about it, and we still got a lot more to go. If you like what you heard, give us a uh, give us a like, give us a subscription, give us a comment. Did you hate this movie as much as we did, or are we missing something? <laughs> Tell us why you love New York as much as Jason does and oh how, you know, and if he should be cut into the remake of I'm on a boat <laughs> by the lonely island. <laughs> That's going to do it for today. We'll catch y'all later. See you guys later.